Kamarjoba. Hey everyone, in this video I discuss the national epic of Georgia. I'm talking about the country Georgia, not the US state. The country's actual name is not Georgia among Georgians. They call it Skatvelo, a country of 4 million people. So Georgia is an English name. The Knight and Panther skin was written 800 years ago. Up until early 20th century, a copy of this book was part of a girl's dowry upon marriage. So I cannot exaggerate the importance of this book among Georgians. I wonder if Joseph Stalin read this book. He was Georgian and a poet when he was young, but he's not known for his poetry though. Okay, who was Shota Rastavelli? Shota Rastavelli lived between 1160 and 1220, was a minister of finance during the reign of Queen Tama the Great, the first woman to rule Georgia between 1184 and 1213 for about 29 years. She carried out many reforms, the most crucial being abolishing death penalty and terrible torture techniques. This period in Georgian history is considered the golden age of poetry, literature and cultural flourishing, which ended when the Mongol hordes showed up a few years later. There is a suggestion Rostovelli also spoke Persian, so there is a chance he read Fedosi Shahnama, which was written 200 years earlier in Persian. Today, Shota Rostovelli State Prize is the most prestigious prize in art and literature in Georgia. Many streets are named after him in many cities in the Caucasus and Central Asia and Eastern Europe. Interestingly, his name Rostovelli refers to his birthplace, Rostovi. He was known for his humanist views, worldly love, friendship and equality which was somewhat contrary to a religious God-centered view, so some suggest he was persecuted and fled to Jerusalem and lived in a monastery. His book was too subjected to many bans by the church as they deemed it too dangerous for the young. You will be pleased to know that unlike other epics I've discussed here, the knight and panther skin is not very long. It has 6,648 lines, or about 1,600 quatrains, roughly about 200 pages. It was written sometimes between 1180 and 1205. It's mainly set in the fictional Arabia and India and the same way Shakespeare said his stories in Italy or Denmark, simply because you couldn't really write freely about your own country in case you get into trouble with the authorities. Despite its foreign settings, it's generally understood that this story is an allegorical tale of the Georgian Queen Tamar. Okay, what is the story? It's about two medieval knights in love with two princesses. So it's a romance, but also to be precise, bromance, as the story emphasizes their friendship as they each pursue their women. Two men, an Indian and Arab, it's not a joke, they are each in love with a woman, but their friendship is the highlight of the story. Summary the story begins with Rostevan, the king of Arabia, appoints his daughter as the next ruler of the country as he has no son. And his favorite knight, a young man named Aftandel, is one of the main protagonists in the story. One day they go hunting. Near a river they see a man wearing a panther skin. But ironically the big cat, no I mean the knight in the big cat's clothes, is crying like a baby. This is the first of many cries in this story. The king sends a messenger, but the knight in his madness kills the messenger and disappears. This act in fact is highlighted to show the man's either in love or completely mad. King Rostovan is very insulted, so he obsesses over the mysterious knight. He orders a search party to find him, but he cannot be found. Meanwhile, the knight, Aftandel, is in love with King Rostovan's daughter, Princess Tinatin, who is the next queen. She notices how distraught her father is, not being able to find the knight in panther skin. She tells Aftandel if he can find the mysterious knight within three years, she will marry him. Aftandel takes up the challenge, he wants to marry the princess. He searches high and low, but the knight in panther skin cannot be found. Finally, after close to three years, he locates the man inside a cave. He learns that the mysterious knight is in fact a prince from the kingdom of Saradon in India. Don't google it, it's a made up name, or it existed a long time ago. And his name is Taril. He tells his story of falling in love with a princess called Nestan Darijan, but she was to marry the prince of Khawarazm, the Persian kingdom in Central Asia. If you didn't know, Khawarazm Shah was the idiot who triggered Genghis Khan to start invading the world by killing his messengers. So the knight in panther skin tells Aftandel that he killed the prince of Khawarazm, the bridegroom, but failed to find princess Nestan. He looked everywhere, but she was gone. 
Now Aftendel, the knight from Arabia, has fulfilled his mission of finding the mysterious knight so he can marry Princess Tinatin. Now that prosperous marriage seems to be in the back, so he decides to help the Indian knight, Mr. Tarrell, in his romantic quest to find his princess. He cannot bear the sad story anymore. Despite King Rostevan's order not to leave, Aftendel returned to his new Indian friend to help him find Princess Nestan. The search for Nestan starts at the Kingdom of Fredon, then in the city of Golanshiro, where Aftendel is seduced by a chief's wife who gives him vital information on the whereabouts of the princess. She tells him that the princess was kidnapped by demon king Kajik. Now, the two knights, Aftandel and Tarel, with the help of King Freydun, manage to assemble an army of 300 men and they all set off for the land of Kaji. They release Princess Nestan and they all return to Arabia. Aftandel is forgiven by the king and he marries Tinatin. Then they go to India where Tarel marries Nestan. So many weddings. Now the three knights rule their respective kingdom happily ever after. Happy ending all around, except for the bad guys. Philosophy Despite Georgia being a Christian country at the time, the poem doesn't deal with religion so much. The main characters are religious people, but also secular. The story is very human-centered, and everything achieved through hard work and dedication, with some occasional luck. It's about human taking things in their own hands. For example, to rescue the princess, they rely on human courage rather than divine intervention. The poem depicts a sympathetic view of Islam and Muslim in the book despite being written by a Christian. Some suggest that the story had existed prior to Rostavelli turning into a verse, pointing to the fact that all the places mentioned are outside Georgia and names appear to signify Persian origin. Rostavelli himself acknowledges it in the poem, quote, This Persian tale now done into Georgian. Several translators also notice a large number of Persian words used in the poem. Arabs are depicted as more level-headed people while Indians are more emotional. The Orthodox Church in Georgia in the past destroyed the poem, accusing the author to have been a Muslim and also too secular. Well, how the world has changed. I think the main philosophy is to enjoy love in this world rather than afterlife. Rostovelli quotes many Greek philosophers too in the poem. It appears he had contact with the West and East and came up with something in the middle that combined both worlds. The story and the intensity of passion might be Eastern with its Western cool-headedness, like the King of Arabia being quite progressive and reasonable man. Scholars believe the poem is a great example of Eastern Renaissance as the Islamic world and the Caucasus region studied and adapted Greek philosophy and science some 700 years before the Europeans did in 15th century. Rostovelli depicts a humanist philosophy of life to be enjoyed in this world and the idea of equality, rationality and altruism. For example, an Arab prince risking his own life to help an Indian prince simply out of compassion. Gender equality. The poem, although written from a man's point of view, for example, the two men rescue the princess, it has many revolutionary ideas for that period. For example, the king of Arabia peacefully agrees to crown his daughter, Tinatin, as the next ruler of the country. She in turn takes up the challenge and sends Aftendel to find the man in panther skin. Both female love interests in the book initiate romance with their men. Also, a man who loves a woman becomes her servant, as we saw Aftendel accepting any challenge set by Tinatin. At one point, Rostovelli even says male and female lions are equal despite their differences. So the poem had a very progressive views on gender equality. Perhaps no surprise, as Rostovelli worked for a female ruler in Georgia. In this channel, I discussed Fedosi Shonama quite a lot. Now, that there's no doubt that poem has Persian connection, as Rostovelli himself acknowledges that he's writing a Persian story in Georgian language. So, while reading, I found a few things that I noticed in Shonama. One of the princesses has a radiance around her face like a halo that turns some people blind as it's too bright. In Shanama, this radiant quality, called Far, belongs to the royal family members. Men are described like cypress tree or sun, and women are like moon, which are very similar in Shanama. The Arab king Rostevan is also mentioned in Shanama. Snake is the evil here, as it was in Shanama talking about King Zahak. The biggest similarity I found was in the language of hyperbole, exaggeration of certain beauty, or grief, or separation. Intense passion. One thing very unique in the knight in panther skin is how much emotion there is in the story. 
The book has many ironic moments. You often find the knight in Papa's skin cry so much. The first time we see him, he cries like a real baby. The weeping never stops. They are very strong and courageous, but also cries like babies. They fight to be together, but as soon as they achieve, they part. The knights are described as the sun, while the princesses as the moon. But don't be fooled in thinking that men come out during the day and women during the night. It's more to do with the cultural references rather than the roles. The romance of the poem is a little melodramatic, full of passionate rage and frenzy. I felt Rostavelli was poking fun at these powerful men, going mad and crying like babies because their women are missing. One moment they are described as lions and the next moment they weep and weep. When the knights head out on a mission, instead of throwing water, the whole population shed tears. You might find the history a bit too much. But the crying only happens when everything else fails. They battle, they threaten, they even harm themselves, and then crying is just another option. Crying is also used as a bonding mechanism, like babies connect with their mothers. And here the readers with the heroes, as we see them as real humans like everybody else. Shedding tears might be embarrassing for men in some cultures, but not in Georgia. Now that is courage. I have a hunch, not a theory, but a hunch that men who cry, they get to have more sex than those who don't cry. However, studies show that when women cry, there's less sex. Maybe Georgian men have found the secret. If you're a Georgian man, leave a comment, support my theory, or rubbish it. Love and Friendship the main theme of the epic poem is love. Both men fall in love and do everything to get their girls. This was back in the days when men had to show their love and prove their love in the real battle. The freedom to marry for love is not up to negotiation. The one time when a marriage is arranged, the bridegroom, the prince of cars, is killed. Women are depicted more favorable in this book. They are loyal, chaste, and often in charge. For example, the kingdom of Arabia is ruled by a woman. But I think bromance between the two knights takes center stage in this poem. At time, friendship is stronger than love. For a knight who survives, he needs good friends. At one point, one of the knights leaves his fiancée and disobeys his king to be with his friend. In fact, the entire plot of the story is rested on Aftandel helping his friend to find his love. Without his help, Taril would not be able to achieve his goal of finding Princess Nestan and marrying her. So the bromance is a huge part of the story. Nizami Ganjavi. There has been a great deal of research on the comparison between Rostovelli and the great Persian epic poet Nizami Ganjavi. They lived at the same time and some suggest they knew each other personally, as they were quite close neighbors. Nizami lived in Ganja, modern day Azerbaijan, and Rostovelli lived in Georgia. But there's no concrete evidence for it other than the proximity of their birthplace. You can Google Ganja. It's a real city, a major hub for Persian literature and culture a thousand years ago. I'm not sure if the street word Ganja originated in Ganja, but it was the birthplace of one of the most celebrated Persian poets, Nizami. Scholars point out that while Nizami's output is enormous as he left many love epic tales behind him, the most famous being Laila and Majnun, and there are many similarities between the two poets. It appears Majnun, the mad lover, appears in the night in panther skin as Case, but the difference is more in their outlook on love. Rostovelli locates love in the actual physical culmination, which is somewhat similar to European style, while Nizami more on the spiritual level, while Nizami more on the spiritual level or a union of lovers souls. Also the ending is somewhat optimistic in Night and Panther Skin, while in Laila and Majnun they both die like in Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Rostovelli finds meaning in this world while Nizami is a mystic and sees love as a form of obsession and madness. Both of them lived in the mountains regions of the world. The rugged mountains harden the people, so with passion they can move mountains. Love is very intense among Iranians and Georgians. Why Georgians love it? Now here's the biggest irony. The heroes aren't Georgians, nor are they Christians. The story is not set in Georgia, yet the country is madly in love with the poem. Every Georgian family has at least one copy of this book in their house. Okay, the obvious answer is the language. It was written in Georgian, a language that is so unique that it has its very own alphabet and it's only spoken in one country, Georgia. 
In fact, if you name a savior of Georgian language, this poem would be it. It's been read for 800 years. To understand how much Georgia loves this poem, the man who illustrated it was a Hungarian named Mihai Zici, who is now a national hero in Georgia. Rostovil is the Georgian Shakespeare in terms of contribution to the Georgian language and culture. Language aside, you can also read it as a philosophical meditation on life, love and friendship. It's probably one of the earliest books that incorporates Greek philosophy into an epic that emphasizes life on this earth instead of afterlife. Divine is good, but it's earthly love that takes center stage here. Its ultimate message being that you ought to have a fulfilled life, but also be loyal to your friends, family and country. On top of being beautifully written and philosophically rich, it is also a really action-packed story that moves really fast. Probably it's one of the greatest examples of work that combines the Eastern literature with Western literature. The characters seem to embody Western and Eastern values. Also note that there is no big cat in this story, only men pretending to be big cats. They roar but also cry, but they can also kill lions and panthers to steal their skin. Form and Translation The poem is written in Shairi form, an old Persian poetry form with 16 syllables. There has been many translations of this book in English. I read the translation by Marjorie Scott Wardrop, which was published in 1912. It is a bit outdated. I found the language a bit too challenging as the translator has tried to make it old by using Shakespearean language. A recent translation by Lynn Coffin seems to be the best out there as it has used the original Georgian rhyme scheme. Of course, any translation will not be able to capture the linguistic intricacy of the original. Ultimately, the Night in Panther Skin is a timeless piece of world literature that deals with questions we have even today. It's about love, friendship, loyalty, and what matters the most in life. Thank you very much. Or Madluba, as the Georgians would say.